Hello! This is the first time I'm recording this and at this point I decided to start unscripted. Um, so I was bored one day, you know, and I thought, hey, I like Viego and I mean, if you know me, you know I like Viego and if, if you don't know me, hi, hi, I'm Papu Hoho and I really like Viego. So I was just sitting there. Uh, chilling because it was like winter's winter break uh, and I decided to make an iceberg and turns out that there is a lot of Viego facts actually I have over 140 of them here so since I already made a graphic I, I just assumed that I could actually talk about this so that's why we are here and now going back to the scripted thing um, the iceberg has nine levels and it contains spoilers for Rise of the Sentinels, uh, Visual Novel, Hollow Ruination Event in League of Legends, Ruined King Game and Ruination Novel. But I also got some info information from his Reddit and Twitch Q&A, but also replies from his writers uh, who are or were rioters and overall like ruination Q&A. Everything here is coming from official sources uh, with few exceptions but we'll get to them and I'll try to provide uh, sources though I'm actually like recording my voice right now and if I... we need to see if I actually can edit stuff you know it's, it's, it's the first time I'm doing everything here because yeah I was I wanted to do this this badly. And just in before, it's it's a Viego iceberg, it's not a ruination novel or Sentinels of Light or Viego or Viego related champions you know iceberg. No no no. Because if I oh if I were to like include everything about ruined king game and development and separate universes and champions there and lore and interactions between them oh it would be the longest thing ever <laughs> and i would i would not have motivation to do that because you know i like viego we are, we already established that and if there is no viego what's the point am i right yeah <laughs> so um i already told you that there is a lot of entries i split them into levels yeah we know that uh, and if we get some new stuff this year, because I'm recording this in early January, I'm kind of hoping to get it done before his birthday, but I'm pretty sure I can't do this. Um, so yeah, if I do this in the beginning of 2023, then hopefully like by the end of the year or something, I could actually um, make an update. with. You know, few new, new things. Maybe he gets a story, or is included in a cinematic, or gets merch, or something is revealed. I don't know, new skins and stuff like that. We'll see, we'll see. So, uh, on top of that, you may hear that first of all, I'm sick, because uh, I don't know why, but it happened, and I'm not getting better, but I'm impatient, so I'm starting recording this thing now. And second of all, uh, I already told you that it's the first time I'm recording everything, blah blah blah. I'll try to figure it out. And last thing is, maybe you probably noticed that English is not my first language, I don't know. Like, you know, maybe my accent is the issue, I don't know. Uh, but, but the thing is that there, there are probably English mistakes, uh, because, uh, yeah. But I tried my best, and I will try my best to, through the whole video. We'll see how it goes. Uh, the rest should be less cha chaotic like that. I just, I decided that, hey, I'm, I'm recording this, you know, it's the intro. We can, we can do this. <laughs> we can talk like that. So, um, yeah. And first of all, before we go into the whole uh, level thingy, I should, I was informed that I should actually give like a short summary of who actually is Viego. So, I will do that. So, who is Viego, you may ask. And I will tell you. So, he is a 2021 champion who was and is 
an AD jungler. Um, his main thing is possessing other champions when he gets a takedown, but also like in the lore, it's, he is possessing other champions. And in lore, he is also an undead wraith and spirit of a king. His wife kind of died and, and he wants to bring her back because uh, he is just like that, okay? <laughs> uh, he was released with a whole ruination event and like uh, sentinels trying to stop him. Uh, he got a game and like three champions were released tied to his story, you know, basic stuff. Um, and yeah, that's, that's how the intro went. I don't know how good it is, probably not very, but I will try my best. Uh, and with that said, I'm Papu Hoho, and let's just start with level 1. <clears throat> Blade of the Ruined King item. It's an item purchasable in the game. It was introduced in the patch 1.0.0.150 in 2012 which was a Halloween release with Twisted Tree Lane update and Elise added as the newest champion. The item has two passives, Siphon and Mistis Edge. It was the first introduction of the idea of the Ruined King that big players got. This is also how Viego's Q is now called. It has a similar on hit and healing effects as well. The difference between how the item looks and how Viego's sword is currently was explained by saying that the item is a physical version of the weapon, though we will talk about that later. The item was updated a few times, but overall it's a still very popular thing to buy in League. One cool thing about it is that few champions have special voice lines when buying it, referencing Viego. For example, Kalista or Yorick and Maiden of the Mist. Surprisingly, Vigo doesn't have special voice lines when buying his own sword. This item was also featured in Pentakill's second album, Grasp of the Undying, as one of the songs were named after it. Isolde! <laughs> she is the main drive in Vigo's story. She was his wife. According to Gwen's development article, she comes from a nation conquered by Vigo's ancestors. And she always dreamed of a perfect fairy tale priest. She and Viego loved each other. In the novel, she was much more grounded, hoping to bring equality in Kamavaran society and help the poor. As a queen, she was loved by common people. She was also a seamstress and made Gwen doll for herself. She cared deeply for her. In the Ruination novel, she was able to create glass sphere, so she was also a mage but it's the only time her abilities are mentioned, if I remember correctly. The novel also mentions she comes from a ma matriarchal family. She respects many of her aunts, and she wanted to reunite with them in death. Isolde died from a poison in the dagger that brushed her skin in Diego's assassination attempt. She accepted her death, but Diego brought her back to life. Due to pain and confusion, and possibly anger, in that moment, her ghost version of self stabbed Viego with his own sword, killing him and causing ruination. She got shattered and Sentinels of Light event happened, and in the end she probably was able to actually rest in peace. Many people wanted her to be a champion, though considering her wish of being able to stay dead, this will most likely never happen. She also has two voice actresses, Andressa Andrata and Carol Valenza, and both are Brazilian, so that's pretty neat. Where is she? <laughs> this just refers to Vegas' voice line. Uh, he says it twice in League PC, though his delivery when Ultic is much more recognizable. As you can, you know, I tried to imitate it, whatever. <laughs> He also says it in the Ruined King game and Legends of Runeterra, but not in the novel. Not even once. It's more of a joke entry, since of course he says it, he's looking for his dead wife. It's here because this line got a new status in the community. Sometimes, when something isn't being released on time, it's used 
Tabi, tabi. <laughs> King Viega skin. King Viega is a skin that shows him before ruination happened, when he was just a human. Because voice lines in the skin don't even use the ghost filter effect to emphasize on this concept. The skin was created and released most likely as a part of Ruination novel promotion, since the story is set 1000 years before the current timeline. The release dates were also close. Sadly, not only Kalista, Trash or Hecarim didn't get skins along with Viego, especially Kalista considering she was the main character, but he also didn't get any additional content. And, as an extra fun fact, Wild Rift released Human Trash Icon to promote books released. Personally, I wish Kalista got a skin at least in Legends of Runeterra, though now I'm getting off topic. Alain Viego was a highly requested cosmetic since his human design was revealed along with original release. One more thing worth mentioning here is that Isolde is present in his recall. She is fully modeled and animated. So going back to the mansion that many people wanted her to be in game, their wish was partially granted. Her beautiful model was a bit of a controversial topic, since many champions look much worse than her. Kalista. Even though she didn't make an appearance in the visual novel, nor ruined King game, Kalista is a very important character in Vigo's story. Outside of the fact that she was a great general, and she's the one who found the Blessed Isles, she is Vigo's niece. Even with that fact, she is still older than him by around three years. She promised her grandfather to protect Vigo, and she did so almost until the end, when he betrayed her. Kalista deserved better overall. Bugs. Vigo's main shtick is possessing other champions when he gets a takedown on them. This gives him access to their basic abilities and stats for a short period of time. Since we have over 160 champions and Link runs on an old engine, some of the interaction caused unwanted results. Not all bugs were caused by Vigo's possession passive, but in the end he was and still is a troublesome champion. Well known in the community creator, Vandril released many videos showcasing issues caused by Viego. Some of the bugs I remember well is him cloning infinitely, Ring of Fire dealing thousands of damage per second forming around him due to Aurelian Soul Possession, or Viego disconnecting everyone and straight up removing the game from existence after casting his E, Harrowed Path around Anivia's Wall. Caused so many weird bugs after he released that he was banned from pro play for a few months. Vigo released in January, yet he was allowed in professional league matches in Summer Split around June. He was banned from MSI 2021, which is a big tournament. Sentinels of Light Event Rise of the Sentinels was a 2021 summer event spreading across all of Riot Games' platforms. It was supposed to end Vigo's story. It got infamous for all the wrong things that it did, especially PC version. People were criticizing Champion Fix for the story, both for Sentinel and True Insights. For example, it was a second big summer event with both Riven and Vayne included. There were major lore mistakes, such as Diana being on Targon, or Ruination starting in Demacia, which is one of the furthest re regions away from Shadow Isles, and has an anti-magic defenses, and plot holes. We were introduced to the Absolver and Action, meant to Deus Ex Machina, the whole story. Rioters were giving contradicting answers, such as saying that Black Mist can't reach Vandal City, and then releasing Vex, where the lore states it, it got there. It ruined, no pun intended here, many characters, like Olaf, Misfortune or Lucian. PC version of the novel was also using self-insert rookie character, partially breaking the immersion of this version being the actual lore. It had too many humorous scenes as well. 
Overall, unlike Spirit Blossom 2020, Race of the Sentinels 2021 did not work well in the visual novel format. Each League IP platform also had different characters being important. For example, Wild Rift only had Lucian, Senna, Akshan, Vayne, Irelia and Riven. Legends of Runeterra had Diana and Irelia. And League of Legends on PC had all of the above, plus Gwen, Rengar, Pike, Graves and Olaf. It was hard to understand which version is canon, and Riot Games was trying to tell everyone that somehow every version is canonical. Event progression on League PC also required so much grinding that in the middle of the event they had to buff how many points people were getting for each game. This summer event introduced Unbound Trash, making him a pretty guy, instead of a skeleton in canon, which made a lot of players angry. We still don't really know what happened to Hecarim, who apparently still may be stuck in Demacia. Overall, the whole event was a mess, and now, a year later, Riot is still trying to poke fun at it in the newer stories. For example, Olaf and Graves refuse to talk about what happened on the Shadow Isles, or straight up pretend nothing ever happened. My personal favorite mistake in the story was Vigo in the visual novel saying that Senna has to give him Isolde's fragment back willingly. And in time she will indicating some possible big choice she may have to make, maybe between saving Lucian and Isolde. Yet in the final chapters, Vigo just takes it by force, ignoring this previously stated detail. But lore still canon. This one relates to the previous entry. It's just that Riot didn't really retcon this mess and still keeps it canon. It destroyed lore for many people. It will probably stay canon and Riot will never fix this part of the story, since it would most likely be too expensive with not enough profits back, as a second attempt at ruination storyline would suffer from bad press. And also people just sort of know what happens now, you know? Three different endings. This one also ties with previously mentioned issues with Rise of the Sentinels summer event. Due to different characters present in each media, the story had to end in different ways. For example, in the visual novel, where a lot of characters showed up, they all fought Viego, he made Vex open a portal to Camavor, and there he took Isolde's fragments out of Gwen and Senna resurrecting her. After she gave Diego a talk about how she doesn't feel anything for him anymore, Action shot her, as Absolver wasn't working against Diego, making her disappear and bringing Senna and Gwen back to life. Then Diego said he is lost, and Gwen used her hallowed threads to stitch him into the ground on Canover, where they left him. Vex decided to help Sentinels instead, calling Diego a normie. At the end of the visual novel, ruined characters go back to normal and feel bad about things they did. Though we didn't hear what happened to them uh, after these events to this day. And then Trash reveals himself to be unbound and seemingly now in power to control blackness. In the cinematic, due to character limit, we only saw Viego, Isol, Senna, Lucian, Gwen, Action, Graves, Vayne, and Pantheon, who is the only ruined champion fighting for Viego. Events play similarly, except Viego is able to create a portal to Camavor by himself, and is still frozen in hallowed prison, made by Gwen. Steadfast Heart comic differs the most due to Gwen not being released as a champion there yet. Trash is actually present in the story. Though he doesn't do a grand reveal about his form to Sentinels. In this version of the event ending, Vega just gets blasted by Senna's gun so hard it takes him to Camavor. Which is funny because no portal was opened there. Isolde doesn't really come back there either, not for a moment. 
and Vigo just ends up being tied to his throne by some light magic, fully sentient, just sitting there. From all these sources, we can really tell one thing for sure. Vigo got defeated and is imprisoned on Kamapor. Well, and also Isolde most likely got put to rest as she didn't want to stay with him anymore. Ruined King Trailer This one refers specifically to the second Ruined King Trailer. The first one was released in December of 2019 and was narrated by Trish. A second trailer was released on October 31st, 2020, and in the last 20 seconds of it, we finally saw the Ruined King for the first time ever. After trailer, we also got first promo picture depicting him. Overall, Diego, though we did not know his name yet, was first shown in that video. Lucian and Action Parallel both of these feel like they were meant to mirror Viego in some ways. Lucian and Viego were both center of first two issues of Steadfast Heart comic. And Action also has an interaction towards Lucian mentioning that parallel. It seemed to be a theme goal for visual novel as well. Sadly, it wasn't executed well, as no one really called out Lucian's behavior in the visual novel. It sometimes came out as rather unfair because why was Lucian able to get his seemingly dead wife back with no big consequences? Well, Viego is deemed a villain for the same thing. I mean, only on the surface level at least, considering how many people Viego killed, you know. <laughs> Action was less pointed out, except for his development article, where they called them two sides of the same coin. It's just that both characters also wanted to bring someone dead back to life. Though again, Action is made to be a hero with this, even though he is actually required to kill someone to get another life back. It's one of those Sentinels of Light illogic moments. Ugly Statue That one just refers to unlocked statue Viego got. Most of figures from this collection look rather good. They are sold for above $70 usually, but something went wrong with this one. His face is modeled rather badly, with his features looking more like a caricature. His crown is too low, making him appear without eyebrows. His eyes are also wrong, as he usually has black scler scleras and green irises. Here he has green sclera. His pose is not dynamic and people compared it to Viego waiting for a bus. Overall he was done a bit dirty. It's hard to tell what went wrong as the sculptor seems like a really talented person. His concept art was beautiful and even box art of the statue showed him to look much better. He probably won't be fixed and remade, so Viego likers are stuck with this cursed object. Pike's list. So basically, Pike has this list of people he wants to kill, and Viego is on it. It's mentioned in the visual novel, though they play it more as a joke there. Tricking Pike that Viego's name is present there, so he can help them. But also a post credit scene in Ruined King game exists, where we can see Pike actually writing Vigo's name on that list. Abs out. Vigo's design is a bit controversial, since he is shirtless. If we exclude Aphelius' release, he was the seventh shirtless human male champion released in a row. With Aphelius breaking this link, he was still third in a row. People didn't understand why was this a thing, especially since his alive self wasn't ex exposing his body this much. From a gameplay design perspective, it was explained that making him shirtless indicates he's more squishy, he's not a tank. From a character design perspective, it was most likely to expose his triangle wound on his chest well, though also because sexy champions just sell better. However, as the lower reason why he is not wearing a shirt, 
It was said that when Diego became a race, he was able to give himself a perfect form he wants. Basically, he made himself hotter to look better in his story of saving his queen. This also indicates that he actually made himself look sexier, giving himself abs and pecs. Ruination and Absolution Cinematics Ruination was a season 2021 opening cinematic, and it introduced Diego to League of Legends, as he was added to PBE after that. It's a pretty known basic cinematic. What's worth mentioning is that while Karma and Vayne, who appeared in the cinematic, were included in the rest of the event, Darius, Samira and Poppy were not. There was not a single mention about these three any time later. Ruination cinematic also teased Sentinels of Light thing a bit with the ending scene. Absolution cinematic just ended Vigo's storyline. It's the last time we saw him in a Runeterra universe. Ruined release schedule. Fun actually intended here. Whole Diego release storyline was meant to come out in a different order. When first Ruined King trailer dropped in 2020, it said that the game will come out in early 2021. Intended release schedule was most likely Vigo's champion release, Ruined King game, Gwen Champion release, Ruination Novel, Vex release, and Rise of the Sentinel event with Actions release, putting a final the end on this story. Sadly, due to pandemic, most of things got delayed. We got Diego in January, then a long nothing with occasional teasers going Ruination is coming for a few months as people grew tired of this narrative. Then Gwen released in April, Rise of the Sentinels happened in July, together with Actions release as Vex was delayed too. Vex released in late September, month after story concluded. While Viego was already defeated, in November 2021 we finally got Ruined King game officially released, which shows the event around a year before Rise of the Sentinels narrative. Almost a year later, in September 2022, Ruination Novel was released, telling a story 1000 years before events related to Blackness. Because of these schedule issues, it can be assumed that some lore details had to be changed. At least one good thing is that people working on delayed content most likely didn't have to crunch. Dragons and Dragon Themes Vigo has some references to dragons in his design, such as dragon wings on his boots, and his W, Spectral Maw, can also be viewed as a dragon. With Legends of Runeterra Vigo release, some Camaveran dragons were introduced, in shape of, for example, encroaching mist design. In Truant King game, Vigo also compares himself to a dragon saying that it doesn't fret peasants, it burns. Basically, Camover had dragons, big and small. In the Ruination novel, it's mentioned that very small, almost hummingbird-like dragons lived in Queen's Garden, where they would feed on nectar. Pentakill Punch It's a short entry. During Pentakill 3 concert, Dissonance on Pentakill Viego gets punched by Pentakill Mordekaiser and passes out. A text appears that reads, Viego is beyond redemption, as Pentakill keeps playing above his unconscious body. This entry is above Pentakill Free Concert, since many more people saw this moment, even out of context. It was made into many gifs and memes, and it's quite iconic if you ask me. And with that covered, we can move to level 2. Level 2 Dead Isolde Portrayal Differences We knew a bit of Ruined King lore long time before Viego ever happened, as his story was mentioned in other champions' biographies, for example Kalista and Hecarims. 
There it was said that after Isolde died, young king went mad and locked himself with her rotting corpse. Overall, for a long time it was believed that the story was really grotesque, Vigo carrying her visibly decaying body and such. It was still a thing for a long time, until Wild Rift released a comic showing some of the events before First Ruination happened. There, Vigo was carrying that Isolde who looked like she could only be asleep. People were confused about this change, but overall it was assumed that because of the audience this visual release was aimed at, it just had to be censored a bit. Then, the same thing happened in the Ruined King game opening cinematic, where Isolde looks rather okay, just unconscious. Writers asked about this change to explain that Diego spending all of his kingdom's fortune paid some mages to make her look, well, less dead. While disappointing, many accepted that, though pretty much a year later, with Ruination release, we went back to the first portrayal, with just a small twist. Basically, in the story, Isolde drank from my Mikael's chalice, and it slowed her decay. Yet, she was still dead for a really long time when Vigo showed up on the Blessed Isles. While, yes, the process was slowed down, she was still described as very dead, which was visible from the distance. For example, her skin was dried and turning grey or black. Then it was ignored again. In Legends of Runeterra, in, shard, in a Shard of Hope card, which most likely took Ruined King opening cinematic as a reference, Isolde seems rather well there. Once more. Ruin me emote. It's a very short entry. When Vigo released and looked like a pretty boy, many people joked that they would either like to be ruined by him or ruin him. It was a rather popular opinion in the community, and Riot Games decided to play out the joke. TFT had a ruination-related set, and an emote called Ruin Me was added as a pass reward. It was just at the end of it, and the description of it said, All this blessed water and still thirsty. Sadly, it's not obtainable anymore. Gangplank the Betrayer Gangplank was one of the antagonists in the Ruined King game. Trash made him believe that he can trap Viego in the Buru amulet he owns and use his power to regain control over Bilchwald. In the game, he loses a battle of wills with Viego and becomes ruined. He got a League of Legends skin referencing this game event. Personally, I like the indication that he has a whole Diego in the necklace there. I also think Diego's voice line should be playing instead of gangplanks in the skin, but overall, yeah, this skin exists. Pentakill Free Concert On September 8th, 2021, Riot Games Music collaborated with Wave and released an interactive Pentakill Free Concert where Diego was the main antagonist. Every person watching on the Wave site was assigned one Metal God team and everyone tried to defeat Dissonance of Pentacle Viego. This concert had many great scenes such as Viego screaming very loudly, Mordekaiser falling off a cliff, Mordekaiser being huge, Viego turning Mordekaiser Polish, we will talk about that later, Viego running away on a floating piece of rock trying to be Seraphine, and Viego being punched at least three different times. Wavesite also had specially animated icons for each character included in the concert. The whole event was 45 minutes long and it's available on YouTube. It's great! Fetters when First Ruination happened and Isolde was sort of a ghostly figure, she got shattered, possibly from the impact. Her soul was split into many fragments. Sentinels of Light event was about gathering them from each region before Viego does. 
though he was always the one making it out with every feather. Item feathers mentioned in the stories were old music box, most likely Viego and Isolde's wedding gift, because short story is focused on him reclaiming him from some kingdom, killing many people while doing so, a handheld mirror, reed basket, flagon of wine, silver flower, copper sundial, antique parasol, jade mask, brass bell, and ivory comb. Isol's crown also seems to be a feather, but we will talk about that later. Many of these items don't hold much meaning, except music box, possible crown, and apparently silver flower found in Ionia, which is meant to represent resilient beauty. Isol's soul also got into her doll Gwen giving her life, that fragment represents Isol's joy, into Senna, representing protection, and last one made it into Maiden of the Mist, being Isolde's pain, though also possibly hatred. Removing these fragments of Isolde from living people would kill them. Crown of the Shattered Queen It's a League of Legends mythic item introduced in 2021. The structure of the name is similar to Blade of the Ruined King, so making the connection uh, to Isolde was very easy especially considering she was literally shattered into previously mentioned fetters. The item got introduced after the storyline concluded, giving many people a hope for her return. Though, considering much later entry of unused Ruined King game scenes, it's rather unlikely, as that feather was supposed to be first introduced in this game. E. Wraith Forms Vigo's E-ability makes him create a black mist path, where he can be invisible. Due to that invisibility, not many people are aware of the fact that each of his skins has a special ray form for it. Though Riot usually tries to showcase them for a moment uh, in Recall 2. Base makes Diego armored and masked. So when his models were data mined, many people wanted this to be a toggle. It didn't happen due to possible readability issues. Lunar Beast has a red helmet, making him look a bit more like some bull demon. Dissonance of Pentakill actually turns him into a demon, giving him horns, red body paint with additional black paint, and some metal features on his lower jaw, neck and chest. ADG1 makes him just more blue, and King Viego gets a cave there. It's a pretty nice extra touch for him. Viego's age. At the start of the Ruination novel, at his coronation, Viego was mentioned to be 21 years old. The rest of the story happens 18 months after it, which means he most likely died while 23. Or 22, though we should add some months due to the whole Waters of Life search plot. Apparently, the whole second ruination, from the Ruined King game events to the Rise of the Sentinels ending, took around two years. So if we assume that Viego, even as a Wraith, ages, and I mean, he at least should age mentally, he should be around 25 years old, when he got sealed in the hallowed prison. Pentakill's Blade of the Ruined King in Viego's theme As previously mentioned, Pentakill released a song titled Blade of the Ruined King in their second album. A short, ending part of this 7 minutes long creation is referenced in the official Viego's Champion music theme. Ruined Champions Vigo corrupted many League champions when his ruination happened. In the PC storyline, he ruined Shivana, Draven, Kara, Misfortune, and Pantheon. In the season third cinematic, he also did that to Darius. In the Ruined King game, all of the main six champions have a ruined skin, 
as in the final battle with Diego, he ruins three of the champions that we aren't using, so that they fight for him. It's unspecified if the champions who got ruined manifested their design changes, such as new outfits and hairstyles, or if it was Viego's decision. You know, like Gwen made Sentinel outfits. Voices of Viego Viego is voiced by Sean Thiel in all League of Legends, Cinematics, Legends of Runeterra, Ruined King Game and Ruination Novel Audiobook. He also did Viego's narration for Pentakill 3 promotional videos. Viego also has a singing voice, which is Tyler Smith, known as Tell. He sang Dissonance of Pentakill songs, he is credited under Predator and Conqueror. He also sang I'll Find a Way, a song for canon, Runeterra Viego. Mini Viego Mini Viego is a tiny figure of ADG Viego only sold in a set of five with other ADG skins. The bundle costs $45. He is very small and cute, but his skin tone is incorrect. That, that's all. Vigo's height. Vigo is pretty tall. He is around 6 feet and 3 inches or 190 centimeters. She. It's the title of Vigo's short story. It's mentioned here mainly due to its story art. Not only it uses Viego's sitting pose, which was considered for his splash art too, but it also gave us second art of Viego before he became the ruined king. It was also the first instance of Isolde's design reveal, though we can only see her hair and hand. Uh, to be honest, in this story, Vigo also obtains a feather, so that's worth mentioning as well. Lunar Beast Lore This one just refers to the fact that even though Vigo got a Lunar Beast skin, he is not a part of the main Ox squad. He was a leader of the previous one, and due to his decision making, the whole squad, including his wife, obviously except for him, died fighting the beast. This is the reason why his jacket is blue while everyone else wears red ones. Overall, he is just brooding and angry at the world about what happened. His Lunar Beast lore is the reason why he has a broken horn in his design. Three marks on his shirt might be representing a scar from Lunar Beast's claws as well. Different translations of ruined. This one is rather obvious, but some languages don't use the direct translation of the word ruined. For example, in Brazilian Portuguese he is called the destroyed king. In Polish he is more of the damaged king, and so on. Also, as an extra information, in Chinese his name is more of a foyego, due to V not existing in the alphabet. Wild Rift Diego Vigo was planned to release in Wild Rift either around the time he released on PC or when Sentinels of Light was happening on all of Riot's platforms. Because, come on, he's the main bad guy here. Sadly, because he is very complex on technical level, having to possess other champions to get their abilities and such, he didn't come to mobile version of League of Legends. Apparently, this decision was made very late in his development, which means that all of his assets, such as HD model to spin around, were most likely already made, together with a possible release skin. In the article about that, Wild Rift Team says that he got iceboxed and won't come out yet, so there is a small chance we may see him in the future, Perhaps they make a different passive for him, or something like that, so he can work. He got some cosmetic content referencing him in the mobile version of League. For example, his crown is used as a bubble and icon. Ruination icon border exists as well. There is also Black Mist Rick, Recall, and another bubble with Feathers reference. Short Marriage According to Ruination Novel Q&A, Vigo met Isolde after his coronation. 
The writer said that the marriage was pretty recent. They were married for about a year. We didn't get answer for how they met. Overall, it's interesting how little information we have about the relationship before Isolde got poisoned. And that's it for level 2. Moving on! Level 3. Black Mist and Emotions. This entry refers to the fact that Black Mist seemingly amplifies someone's emotions to dangerous degree. For Vega it was his obsessive love, for Callista it's feeling of betrayal, for misfortune it's the desperation for power, Shivana anger, and so on. Not everyone can be easily specified and it's unsure if that applies to everyone, but that seems to be writer's idea when creating it. BDSM inspiration for Dissonance of Pentacle Diego. This one is simple. He just uses leather harness in his design, which just kind of takes inspiration from bondage and BDSM overall. Zweihander. Blade of the Ruined King is inspired by the real world German to be specific type of sword called Zweihander. It deserves a mention just for the fact that this name literally translates to, to hander, so it's a sword supposed to be held in both hands, but Viego only uses one. Kamavor Kamavor is Viego's nation. It takes a big part of the whole continent it's localized on, as the nation was known for its conquering nature. They have its own Camavari language, as noted in the novel. Camavar is inspired by Spain and Portugal, but also Camelot. We didn't see much of it, just one visual novel artwork, and two artworks from Ruination novel trailer, and Vegas Throne Room, shown in the comic, and Absolution Cinematic. Vegas Birthday Vigo was released on live servers on 21st of January 2021, and by the rules of League, this makes this date his birthday. It's funny because Fresh's birthday are two days later. Vigo technically also has two dates, as Riot Forge celebrates it on November 16th, because this is when Ruined King game released. Ruined King Collector's Edition when Ruined King game released, a special collector's edition was sold as well. It costs $130 and outside of containing the deluxe edition of the game, it also had golden cracker metal coin, mug with Vigo's crown design, leather notebook with pencil, built water map, sketch of Illawi and Gangplank, but also Ruined King game art book, though Vigo is present only on a few pages. Most of these artworks were published online as well. Collector's Edition also had vinyl included, which has around 8 tracks of the gaming music. It's honestly pretty cool because it turns grey in under light. Even though the box with physical goods is stated to be limited edition, it's still available on Riot Merch Store. Novel Trailer a short video narrated by Misty Lee, Kalista's voice actress, was released to promote Ruination novel release. We got to see more of Camavar, but more importantly, because it is a Viego iceberg after all, two more Viego illustrations were shown as well. The trailer is available on YouTube. Design Differences Base Ruined Viego technically has two different designs, one used in League of Legends and Legends of Runeterra, more recognized one, and Ruined King game look. First one gives him black sclera eyes with green irises, his skin is grey or paper white, he has three braids on his side, and his outfit looks a bit more modern. Also, his crown is made out of three green light spikes in front of his forehead. Ruined King game design, on the contrary, has green sclera eyes with green or blue irises, which seem to light in the dark. 
his skin tone is grey, he does not have tight hair anywhere, his outfit looks a bit more ancient, with a lot of embroidery on the jacket, and he also reuses Bell's design, Human Diego head. While on the promo art for the game, his crown is also made out of three spikes, they aren't made out of light, instead they look solid, like diamond shaped rocks. In the game Molo, he has more than three, they float around his head. His chest hole also has black mist pouring from it, staining his body. League of Legends version has black mist in a more of gas, not liquid form, so he is clean there. Relationship with Kalista As previously mentioned, Kalista is Diego's niece, even though she is three years older than him. They grew up together, and Vigo refers to her as his sister in all but blood, seeing her as older sister, not niece. Due to his parents not being there for him, it can also be seen as Kalista being almost like a parent figure to him too. Basically, she was his closest family. Kalista sometimes refers to him as little uncle. And personally, I find it very endearing. Armored Sentinels of Light Sprite In the final chapter of Rise of the Sentinels visual novel, Vigo gets a new sprite, one that's supposed to convey he's more powerful at the moment. It uses armor design similar to his base e wraith form, though it doesn't cover his face, stopping at next length. It also gives him a cool cape made out of black mist. This design wasn't used anywhere else, not in the Ruined King game, not in the final Absolution cinematic or comic, though the latter two were illustrating the same final event. It's a shame, because I think the design was really good. Abuse Allegations even though at the beginning, and overall in some materials, Vigo and Isol's relationship was advertised as fairy tale love story, with time and some interactions, people started to notice some red flags, wondering if it was actually that perfect. This include Vigo's voice line, where he talks how she belongs to him and how he will destroy everything until she is back with him, Isolde clearly not wanting to be with Diego anymore, as Senna tries to protect her from him and Diego takes her by force, and hidden Diego's memories in Ruined King game, where they argue a lot, though arguments can happen to any couple. Diego's writer, Jared Rosen, answered that the relationship was complicated, as Diego is a complicated guy, but Hopefully, it means that no physical abuse was involved. People were hoping that we will see more of their relationship in the Ruination novel, so everyone finally has a clear answer to this situation. But sadly, we didn't get much. Uh, in the novel, Isolde says to Kalista that Vigo is getting controlling, and it's scaring her. In the final conversation between Isolde and Diego, uh, she yells at him, saying that he never loved her, or else he would let her go. It's a heavy topic, with no clear answers. I would say they weren't perfect, but they were also young, with a lot of pressure put onto their relationship. For example, because of Council pressuring Diego. Maybe if they had more time, everything would turn out well. I guess they are free for interpretation. It's complicated, it's a good description. I, for example, find them unhealthy, but not abusive. At least not in the before Isolde's death storyline. I believe Diego forcing her to come back to life twice against her will was rather abusive though. Trish's manipulations. I guess the fact that Fresh manipulated Diego is pretty obvious. They work together only because they both get some benefits from it. This entry refers to the fact that in the novel Trash was talking to Diego in a similar way Isolde spoke to him, with gentle talk. It most likely influenced the decision to trust Warden. Belveth Interactions 
When Belzef was released, pretty much a year after Viego's defeat, she got a interaction towards him, where she says, you can still save her. People were really curious about this line. Viegos and Belvev's writer only said that Belvev doesn't lie. She also says that she doesn't need to lie in her short story, though the tweet got deleted by the time of me recording this video. If we ever get a void event, it would be interesting to see Viego included in it because of this line, though such thing happening is currently unlikely. Pentakill 3 song cover art just before the concert happened, Riot Games Music released four artworks teasing it. Three of them were cover art for songs uh, present in the album. Last one was Pentakill preparing for the battle. This art also showcased the list with names of the tracks in the album. Two of these released artworks have Vigo in the center. First one, Conqueror, depicts him as such too. It's one of my favorite Dissonance Vigo artworks, to be honest. He is just so perfectly smug. Sadly, this artwork was not released in a poster form in Riot's merch store yet. The other one, Redemption, has him in the middle as Pentakill is about to attack him. What's interesting about this one is that his crown here uses crown of forms design, and his pose may be referencing the one in which he got sealed in Hallowed Prison in canon storyline. Family Tree Ruination novel includes artworks on Viego's family tree. From there we can see such things as his father's name, Alvaro, his brother's name, Nivor, named after his mother and previous king's first wife, Nivora, name of his second wife, Camavia, who has the title of Fantas, which is region that Ledros was granted when he got promoted to the commander status. She most likely died in childbirth to twins, Castilla and Bastion, who also decreased near birth. And Vigo's mother name was Lianor. All of Alvaro's wives are decreased, and it's speculated that all of them died near, near childbirth. Similarly with Aliante, Callista's mother. Due to that, it's believed that Isolde would not live a long life either. ADG Recall At the beginning of ADG Viego's Recall, we see a line of X's and check marks with a final one granting him a trophy. This references the final of World of 2021, where ADG was playing against Damwon. ADG won first and fourth games, so it was 2-2, two to two, and that last game secured them a final victory. Because Recall also has a reference to Commander Jarvan IV and Marauder Zinzao, as their weapons can be seen on the battlefield. He also wanted to make some cool sword plays in the rec recall, so Riot Games focused on this aspect of a champion. Ruined Makeover It's a bit of a joke entry. For April Fool's 2022, some of League IP's accounts make parodies of popular mobile game ads. There was a game with Chip and KDA parodying uh, the Speak Your Dialogue option games. DFT with Little Legends Restaurant Simulator and League of Legends posted Ruined Makeover ad, parodying these makeover games. It was just an illustration about fixing Diego, being too evil. The description says, from Ruined King to Rose King, Ruined Makeover coming soon. Steadfast Heart This is the title of the comic Wild Drift released to promote their Sentinels of Light event. As I previously mentioned, it had so major differences from other lore released in that time period, due to many characters unavailable in the mobile version of League of Legends. This comic has five issues, draws previously mentioned parallels between Lucian and Viego, shows us a tiny bit of Viego and Isolde before the tra tragedy happened, and it also had such great scenes as Viego on the Cloud, or Viego tied to the throne. Vladimir. He is Viego's very, very distant uncle. They never really met. He 
he was considered to make an appearance in the rise of the Sentinels visual novel in the Noxus chapter. But due to the character limit, Riot Games chose Yorick for the Shadow Isles chapter instead. I do wonder what his role would be. Vladimir's letter In the voice line interactions, Vigo mentions the letter from Vladimir he didn't answer. Community was speculating that maybe Vladimir knew about assassination attempts and wanted to warn Vigo. But as writer, again, Jared Rosen said, it was just an annual customer letter to whoever was running Camover at the time. Typical royal family correspondence. Though, who knows, maybe if Diego responded to Vladimir, he could help with cur curing Isolde, due to his hemomancy magic. Okay, on to the level 4. We're getting there. Level 4. Purple Jarvan 4. When Diego was being developed and didn't have a model yet, a purple recolor of base German Firth was used instead. Reverse Gwen's theme. What I mean by this is, if you put Gwen's theme backwards, a part of it will sound the same as Diego's theme, specifically the music box part of it. It's a genius little touch, shout out to Riot Games music team, but also to Jessica Lee for illustrating as well. I will link it. $65 kick-up. When Rise of the Sentinels event was happening, Riot released some Ruination-themed merch, and that included ru Ruined and Sentinel kick-ups. One kick-up costs $65, though it's still cheaper than Star Guardian ones, released a year later, as they cost $80. Hand-painted and apparently the crown on top of it is a bit sharp, so it hurts your fingers. But I guess it fits Vigo's feel. Viegling Viegling, or how normal people would say, Vigo Hauntling, is the name of Legends of Runeterra board guardian, who was available in the Sentinels event pass. He's very cute and well animated. He is friends with his sword, and personally, I love him dearly. His description states that his personality is lovesick and his favorite color is black, like his heart. Apparently, many people complained that Diegling is too loud of, as a guardian, which I also find endearing. Vigo Santiarul Molach Volcalas Heigari That is Vigo's full name. It was revealed in the Ruination novel prologue. Kalista, for example, is only Kalista Volkala Higari, as she is not a ruler. A light skin tone. Due to ruined Diego's skin tone be being either grey, green or paper white, not everyone is aware that when he was alive he wasn't pale with peachy white skin tone, and his skin is a bit tan. Riot uses his alive tone in all of his skin models, as he is not a walking corpse in this. Sadly, it's sometimes ignored, and for example his Pentakill 3 concert model, ADG splash art and minifigure all have skin tone too light for his canon self. Ruination Novel Art The novel contains some additional artworks at the start and end of the book. Starting pages have previously mentioned Family Tree and two Camover maps, first one being the one that Diego asked to create so he can find the Blessed Isles location. End of the book artworks show characters present in the story. Kalista, Diego, Hecarim, Erlok Grail, Jendakaya, Rice, Soraka and Phoenix. In the Ruination Q&A, it was said that they chose an iconic pose that showcased the essence of each character. Vigo is described as willing to destroy the world to get what he wants. I'll find a way. During Sentinels of Light events, Riot Games Music released a Vigo song, sung by Tell. 
it didn't get that many views and overall isn't very re recognized by the community, possibly because the video was reusing past cinematic shots instead of new ones, so many assumed it's another recap video and skipped it. I really recommend listening to this song though, it portrays Vigo in a really interesting way in my opinion. First name reveal. We didn't know Vigo's name for a long time. I mean, at least two months. Ignoring that his name was leaked around two weeks before his release, the first time it was officially mentioned in League of Legends was Ruined Draven's biography. Ruined skins were added to PBE around three days before Viego was released. Draven's bio basically just said that he challenged Viego to a duel and lost. And community connected the dots, realizing that Viego is Ruined King's name. Viego Kula It's a redraw of Omni Man's from Invincible series, Meme Pose, where he's squatting, showing off his huge cheeks. This meme was remade with many characters, though from League, Viego and Mordekaiser are the most known ones. Valentine's Day Dissonance of Pentakill Viego for Valentine's Day 2022, Riot Games Music Social me Media commissioned four cards for True Damage Echo, KDA Evelyn, Seraphin, and Dissonance Viego. Viego's cards read Your heart is what I want to conquer, referencing his song Conqueror. His crown has a heart shape, and he has two different colors of his painted nails. These cards were made by Wild Blue Studios. It's the first instance of Pentacle 3 existing as a band in the Riot Records universe as their main lore focused on separate worlds with metal gods and cults. Black Mist Origin This entry refers to the fact that Black Mist was created from waters of life reacting with Yego's sword, putting him in a death loop, then causing world rune that was in the water to combust as well. On top of it, it, its origin also comes from Viego's grief. Power from emotions. Basically, the more an anger or grief Viego feels, the more upset he is, the more powerful he gets. Early champion concepts. Some of the earlier champion concepts for Viego were making him to look much more monstrous. A few of them played with the idea of making him draconic. Some of them explored the idea of him being a skeleton, and other considered old king approach. One of the concepts present in the Ruined King art book had Vigo use Isolde's tombstone as his sword. By the end of the day, they decided that no old wise king would ruin the world for his dead love, picking a young, unexperienced option instead, differentiating from the Lich King visual. The early exploration of Pretty Viego we currently got included him having a long green hair and sword whip. Wound on his chest wasn't triangle shaped, instead being a really huge round hole. These concepts were heavily considering using rose motif for him as well. Not only his portrait holding this flower, the tip of his sword's handle has rose as well. Outside of that, his jacket was made to have rose petal motif, as described on the concept, and his cape looked similarly to four new roots. ADG skin exploration Almost every skin line gets more than one design exploration, and ADG wasn't an exception, so this is a short entry. Before they picked blue and silver Dragon Knight theme, there was seemingly gothic blue and purple one, red and black vampire one, and another black and blue one where Vigo had a shirt and looked very good. It seems to be more inspired by Korean culture too. Picked concept for ADG Vigo also had a shirt at first. It got removed later. Social media artwork. Riot Games sometimes commissions freelance artists from the community to create some promotional artworks for the game. Vigo was included in some of these. 
For example, in mentioned earlier ruins Mary cover art made by Apricot Knight. There is a slight Vigo art for Holidays 2022 by Super Risk and Holidays 2021 by Young. Game Reviego by Skizo, Tinder Vigo by Art Teapot Studio, and he was also included as an Easter egg in their Star Guardian artwork. Twice. Legends of Runeterra had Diego included on their second anniversary artwork by Gornel, where he is very tired, and on their New Year's artwork by Ichiro Totosaki. Vig Link makes an appearance to on two commissioned artworks, one made by Zverauko and the other by Yang. Team Fight Tactics have mainly Chaos Tango art, but on one comic made by Ichiro Todosaki, Vigo is training him to win again Order 1, trained by action. He ends up doing makeup for him and teaching him how to look evil. He's great. In the concept version, he actually won too. Overall, it's great to see artists being noticed by Riot Games. They always deliver really great artworks. Nanyo Necrit Necrit is a well-known in the community content creator, mainly lore YouTuber. Riot decided to reference him in their IP, but naming a character Nanyo Necrit. Nanyo first appeared in Legends of Runeterra Vegas card Flavor Test. Then he was an important character in Ruined King game, helping main crew to defeat Viego. He was also present in the Ruination novel. In both game and book, he is described as Vigo's advisor. It's also said that he loved Vigo like a grandson he never had. His portrayal differs in both sources a bit, because in the game he acts like a victim, telling main characters how he could not prevent Vigo's madness. In the book, however, he actively enables it many times, supporting the idea of searching for the Blessed Isles. He betrays Kalista as well. In the audiobook, his voice actor is Andre Soliguzo. In the game, it's Javier Fernandez Peña. And with Necrit finally covered, we can move to the lower level. Level 5! <laughs> Camavea. Before Camavor, there was Camavea. I mean, not in the lore, it's just the first iteration of the name for Vigo's kingdom. It got changed as it translates to Old Bed in both Portuguese and Brazilian Portuguese. Old name was used in one, deleted now, Vigo's voice line. It's also used in Ruined King game journals and scenes. Pentakill 3 lore. Oh, this may be a long one. While most of Riot Records, or so-called Music Verse skins, take place on Earth, Pentakill 3 got its own universe, where gods of metal grant their power to the best band and humans worship them. Pentakill rules this world, chosen by the noisome host, pretty, pretty much having a cult around them, and anyone who defies them gets punished. Three gods are told to exist. Stentors, the Deep One, by whom Olaf was chosen, Perpetuum, the Immortal One, and who chose Cartus, and Cacophony, the Mad One, who blessed Mordekaiser. These gods make it so only the deserving bands can exist, which happens to be Pentakill only. We got around 5 videos narrated by Vigo explaining this lore. Vigo exists in this world and tries to defy its rules. He believes that such thing as Lost Chapter exists, which has information about the fourth forbidden and forgotten god, Nutaris. A three chapter long story about this was released where a character known as Melody finds out he was telling the truth. This storyline is then continued in a few more narrated videos, in which Vigo summons Mutaris 
by sacrificing a lot of people, and finally can fight Pentakill, changing the status quo. Whole storyline end is a bit anticlimactic with the concert and Vigo being punched there, which is a shame, as he was made to be a villain. I mean, okay, he killed people, though he seems to have a point with wanting to fill the world with a new sound and vision. I'm definitely biased here, but I would love to see him come back and win, starting a new cycle of musing in this universe. Overall, I highly recommend these videos and stories. The order should be first four videos up to The Outsider, then Dissonance Versus Chapter 1 and 2, Vigo's Offer and Dissonance and Betrayal, though they sort of take place off screen for the story. Last chapter of the written lore, accounts of the aftermath where even Melody speaks, and finally, the concert. TFT Ruination Lore This one is going to be shorter. Basically, Teamfight Tactics had its own set inspired by Ruination events. But instead of the sides we know, Sentinels and Ruins, uh, fighting there, we had Chaos and Order, represented by two Pangus. It got a few cinematics and mini-events, it was cute. I'm not going to cover the whole thing, because, like I said, it's a whole different uh, story. ATG Legs ATG model has one flaw, and it's that they forgot to give Viego his leg muscles on the model. He has sticks instead of legs, and that's the big issue. It's a shame, because it's a 2022 skin, and I have no idea how it came unnoticed. ADG Hair Don't ask me why we are focusing on ADG Viego details so much, but ADG Viego uh, on the model has dark eyebrows, but white hair, and it implies that he dyed either of them. That's, that's it, that's a whole entry. <laughs> $400 statue. League of Legends collaborated with Infinity Studio to create 1 to 6 scale Vigo statue. He is uh, lower than previous merch, not only due to his cost, which is actually higher than $400, it's at least $409, but he was also not sold on Riot merch store. You could only pre-order him from different stores, which is odd because other products such as Zyra or Fiore statues were available there. Some sources say this statue is limited to 499 pieces worldwide. He released around June 2023. Waters of Life Different Places I know, I know, this is maybe worded a little weird, but this is what I mean by this. In the Ruination novel, finding where waters of life are hidden is a big deal, a big part of the story. It's like an underground pool and it's extremely hard to access it. Many special keys are required and stuff like that. In the comic, game cutscenes and Legends of Runeterra card art, it's all portrayed as something out in the open, available for everyone on the Blessed Isles. As a side note, in every single portrayal of that we should also have Trash around getting to drink his water. It's very sad that he gets erased from this scene. But basically, it seems that both comic and Legends of Runeterra art were based of, on Ruined King game design of the space, while the book wanted to have more drama around reaching it. So it's a guarded secret place instead. We know that these two things, book and game, were developed separately, and that's why so many things differ. Resurrected Viego Fury At the end of Sentinels vs. Viego story, Action shoots Isolde with his Absolver, killing her. Absolver resurrects people who were killed by the shot person, so in the cinematic and visual novel, both Senna and Gwen go back to life. It's a bit weird, since it was Diego killing them by forcefully pulling Isolde's soul out, but Riot just needed a way to resolve this conflict, even with plot holes. Anyway, we know very little about Absolver and if it has some people or time limit, 
when it comes to resurrection. But Isolt was definitely the one who took Viego's life as she stabbed him with his own sword. At the end of the cinematic, he loses his chest hall and ruined crown, which sparks a tiny possibility that he could be regaining his humanity. Sanctity slash Solorender These are two names Blade of the King was called. Sanctity was used by people in Camagor. Solorender was a name given to it by the enemies. In the Vigo Q&A, it was said that the sword takes a piece of your soul when you get bound to it, so when you get wounded in the battle, it is technically possible to restore you. In the novel, Vigo says that once person who is currently bound to it dies, the link gets broken though. Sanctity is a symbol of Camavaran royalty. Coronation ceremony is about attempting to get bound to this weapon. If it doesn't accept the person, they die. If they survive this test, they have the right to rule the Camavor. Blade of the Ruined King Evolution As mentioned in the very first entry, Blade of the Ruined King looks a bit different than physical version of Sanctity. At first, this item's icon wasn't similar to the design at all, not being as Vihander. In the pre-season 2021 update, they finally tweaked the icon to resemble Viego's sword more. But then, around pre-season 2023 changes, they changed it again, making it ruined. For whatever reason, it got the triangle hull on it, which Viego's sword doesn't currently have, not even in the ruined version. Overall, this change made the design even less canon, since it kept being explained as pre-ruination physical version of the relic. Sona Collection Search This one is short and silly. When you go to your skin collection tab and search for Sona skins by typing her name, Dissonance of Pentakill Viego also shows up. I mean, it's kind of obvious since there is a word Sona in Dissonance, but I think it's a fun little cute fact. Spicy food. Because writer said that Vigo is quite accustomed to spicy food and could handle eating it. Makes sense considering cultures Camover was based on. Daddy and mommy issues. In short, Vigo has both. His mother died in childbirth. His father did not care about his second son. Some of Viego's behaviors were seemingly caused by his inner need to prove that he was worthy of his father. Novel Outfits Another short one, well... Viga in the novel rocks some outfits, such as black chorus during his assassination party, to show that he is a warrior even though he did not fight in the battle, his nightgown, specifically not during the night, because he was too depressed to sh actually dress up. He also wore an open black velvet robe with just trousers and no shirt or shoes. And his last outfit, he was described as being lavishly dressed in regal purples and blues. Crop Top Chromas Lunar Beast Viego has a few chromas that give him crop top or remove his shirt completely. That's it. Due to the fact that we have one more chroma entry lower, let me just add here that King Viego also has a chroma that gives him a corset. Also, check out his concept art for this. Dissonance of Pentakill Concept You know, on topic of concept art, Dissonance of Pentakill Viego was planned to look much different than what we got. It seems they were considering to make him look more demonic, with some futuristic details. His skin tone was inhuman and he had a lot of metallic parts. Some parts of that idea were also used in his rave form. Shout out to his concept artist, Taylor Jansen, also known as Metaforcer. Thank you for adding Bad Glow to his base model. Yorick. I did not forget about Yorick Mori. Like, of course he was meant to play a huge part in the story of Ruined King. His whole life goal was to stop him. 
Maiden of the Mist, which kept following him for hundreds of years telling him to give up, was a fetter, containing a part of his old soul. Yarek made a cameo in Ruination novel and Sentinel's visual novel, though his role was still very minor, considering that, you know, stopping Diego was his main drive. We still don't know what happened to him after last chapter of the novel, where he was somehow able to give Maiden of the Mist to Sentinels. He isn't that low on the iceberg because of all that, though. He's here because when he was getting reworked, it was considered to make him the Ruined King, who just forgot about it. I guess Isolde would be turned into Maiden of the Mist in such scenario. Not a shirt between them refers to the line in Actions Champion Insights blog post. One section of it was titled Two Men, Not a Shirt Between Them, referencing the fact that neither Diego nor Action were one, mentioning they are two sides of the same coin. It's just another joke line and possibly a reason why Diego and Action are shipped. And now we move even lower, we're past halfway now. Level 6 He doesn't know who killed him. As we already established, Diego died because resurrected Isolde drove his blade through his chest and heart and everything. He clearly saw her do that too, yet in his Q&A it was said that he sort of doesn't remember that. It's also hinted in his voice line. His writer said that deep down he's probably aware of what happened, though. Unprepared King Vega was never meant to rule, since he was second in line. When he became a king, he did many things that Camavaran Council didn't agree with, such as some changes in society and marrying a peasant for love. That's not the point of this entry, though. In the novel, sometimes it's clear that he isn't very prepared to rule yet, as he is unaware of some things. For example, how does the law work, when he wanted Ledros as his royal guard, or that they have royal cartographer. If he was allowed to rule for longer, with Callistas and Isolde's help, he would probably be a great king, considering some of his qualities. Nivor Nivor is the name of his older brother. He was at least 20 years older than Diego. We really didn't get much information about him though, except that he was meant to be a king, he was Callista's father, and that he died in an unexplained, sudden way. Diego in Valorant when Final Ruination Viego was happening, it was split across all of Riot's platforms, Valorant included. There, a Ruination collection was released, which included some gun skins, a theme around Black Mist visuals and such. If you killed someone using the skin, their dead model would become ruined, looking like Viego's passive. A knife looking like Viego's broken blade was also released. Its upgrades are fixed, physical version of Sanctity. What's funny is that agents in Valorant are actually holding it properly, with both hands. Well, as we know, Vigo in canon doesn't. The guns in this collection were named after champions related to the storyline. There was a Sentinel collection as well. As a fun fact, I just want to say that Gwen was included in the ruined size of things here. Ruination Collection also had a spray with Vigo's triangle hole, gun body looking like his wedding ring with Camavar symbol on it, and player card showcasing Vigo fighting against seemingly Demacian sentinels. He has a card, banner and icon with it. I love this art because he gave his rave guns. Vigo appeared in Valorant Cosmetics twice because later, in 2022, a Doodle Bud collection was released. He is only present on one's gun version, on Ares specifically. He is in his canon form between Gwen and Pentakill. Dissonance Diego and KDA Kaisa 
As previously said, Vega's singing voice is Tell. Tell also sang Rise, released for Worlds 2018. You know what other League-related song was also released in 2018? KDA Popstars. One of the singers there is Jaira Burns, who is the voice of Kaisa. These two singers collaborated to sing Popstars and Rise mashup together for League of Legends 10th anniversary. Basically, you could joke that Dissonance Viego and KDA Kaisa sang together. That's all. It's a pretty wholesome idea, though, in my opinion. Wedding in the Mist slash Vexana. Look, this is about Mobile Legends, and I'm not very well informed on this subject. But when a ruination event in League was happening, they released Wedding in the Mist video. And while personally I think it doesn't feel like a copy of Vigo's story at all, except some ghost people and wedding mansion, many people accused them of stealing League of Legends idea. It wouldn't be the first time, as Mobile Legends already lost one lawsuit against Riot Games at that time. But overall, yeah, I felt like this deserves a spot on the list. League partner Pentakill Free Gift. To be honest, this is more of a Pentakill Free fact, not Dissonance Diego one, so I'll be quick. Some League content creators were given shoutouts during Pentakill concert. Actually, Diego did those at Necrit and Tobias Fate. That's one thing. The other one, more focused on the entry's name, is that some people were gifted a tiny box with Pentakill Guitar Peak inside. Juicy! Oh my god, okay, so, you see this hole on Vigo's chest, that silly stab wound that he has that's pouring out black mist? Yeah, so, that's his choosy. Moving on. Wait, Vigo. This one is a bit funny to me. Uh, we got a second Ruined King trailer somewhere in December 2020. And it was a gameplay trailer specifically. In the last few seconds of the video, we got a second ever look at Diego, before anything else released. The thing is, he was a bit wider than the previous one, more buff and menacing too. People were just curious, why is he wide? What's his deal? Does he have some power that will make him temporarily more buff and stuff? So that's it, that's, that's why Diego lore. Wild Drift Lunar Beast Viego. It's a short one. Lunar Beast got a cinematic, specifically marketing skins for Wild Drift. So there is no Viego, but in one shot of the cinematic you can see his sword left against the wall. Because of that, there is a possibility he was meant to come to Wild Drift around the same time as his PC release, with Lunar Beast as his first skin there as well. In one Q&A, it was also said he wasn't included, because they locked on this skin concept for him pretty late. League of Legends Polska Peephole Sometimes other region or country, League of Legends, social media, publish their own content, like memes and such. Polish League of Legends tweeted this image of Diego. The description says, you see this Diego, what do you do? It's silly, I just love how he looks. To me it's iconic. BPD BPD stands for Borderline Personality Disorder, and Diego in the novel shows a lot of its typical symptoms, such as mood swings, fear of abandonment, suicidal threats, inappropriate anger, and having that one special person. While the writer, Anthony Reynolds, said it was not his full intention to write Diego with BPD, he also recognizes that Diego's behavior matches this, and he can be read as someone with such disorder. 3AM Build It's a meme term to describe off-meta or more unconventional builds. That's, that's all. Always strong! While Diego being able to hold his sword, even though it's basically his size, 
is explained by the fact that he is currently a wraith and before this blade was connected to his soul, Figo was very physically strong even before becoming ruined. For example, in the Ruination novel, he was able to lift and throw a man with ease. Viegom and Mordekaiser as prophecy As we previously talked about Viego and Mordekaiser Kulo Nimritro, one artist called Blazen made a video where Viego walks around asking for easels and stumbles upon Mordekaiser with his thick ass cheeks exposed. It's this low because people joke that this meme predicted the story of Pentacle Free Concert, where Mordekaiser model also has a very nice ass. Amazing! With more this ass mentioned, we shall move on to an even lower level. Level 7 Crown design. We already covered that Vega's crown looks a bit different in Ruined King game design and in the League of Legends one. The League one with three lines is more recognized. This design, of course, draws inspiration from the crown Vega had when he was still alive and ruled Camavor. What is also worth mentioning, though, is that in Cameroon culture, you draw three lines of blood upon someone's forehead, usually a dead person. You make these lines meet between eyebrows. This trident was a traditional way of helping the dead on their journey to the beyond and ensuring that revered ancestors recognized them. In the novel, Nega has this symbol on his forehead as he might die from trying to form connection with sanctity. Halista also suggests that they should draw these lines on easel once she sees her corpse. Chicken During Twitch Ruination novel Q&A, it was said that Vigo likes chicken meat more than beef, but would pretend to like beef in front of his dad and soldiers. Cafe Cuties Viego in Star Guardian visual novel, Talia really likes Cafe Cutie's place, which has additional lore and, as Kaisa says, over 50 characters in it. Viego was first hinted in the first chapter of Talia's robes, where it said, Watch out for Vladimir's evil nephew. In later chapters, Kaisa says that they did Cafe Cutie's Viego dirty. Apparently, his lore in this universe is that he wanted to use the power of hibiscus fragments to free his wife from the clutches of Earl Grey. He was sealed in the prison of Crystal T for that. Kaisa mentions that Vladimir should have given him these fragments, and it was unfair. Now, we are waiting to see if this skill can be real. Signature a lot of music verse champions have their own autograph signature. We mostly know about KDA ones. Valentine's Day 2022 that included Seraphim, Evelyn, Echo and Diego also had this shown. It was the first time for Echo and Diego. Diego's signature is made to look like Gothic script. The line coming from his G letter in his name underlines a part that spells ego. I think it really fits him. Green. When a champion underperforms for a long time, the mains on Reddit sort of pretends to go insane. It all comes from Rice subreddit. There are a lot of posts about his repeated EQ combo or a fact that he is blue were made. Vigo mains trade a similar thing a few times. Just instead of blue rice, they got green Viego. Viego X Skarner. That's another Star Guardian visual novel entry. In real side storyline specifically, it is mentioned that she is a fan of a manga called Derelict Emperor. The title character of this is a version of Viego, since she says he for example uses Heart of Canaver as catalyst 
or fights with Dread Sentinel Gwendolias. A character called Sir Skarner exists in this story and rails ships him with Diego. As Diego's only weakness is Scorpion, and only his Crystal Knight knows about it. Diego's original writer, Jared Rosen, made a joke about this weakness a long time before the novel was released to players. What are metaphors? Outside of comparing himself to a dragon in the Ruined King game, he also compares himself to a wave, saying that he is still no longer and he, like a wave of death, will roll across every horizon. On some artworks, Black Mist also takes a form of waves. It's an interesting metaphor for Diego. Overall, his connection to water, even starting with blessed ones, is neat. He basically drowned in his grief too, becoming insane, and to get Isolde back, he wants to be like a sea, a brutal force of nature, killing everyone in his way. Braids Ruined Diego has three braids on the side of his head. Alive, King Diego did not have them there. In most of his portrayals, he did not have braids at all. However, in the Well Drift comic, you can see him having this on the back of his head in a few frames. Evelyn It was said that Evelyn's magic and charm probably wouldn't work on Diego in his current state, because he is this much in obsessive love towards Isolde. Honestly, that's kind of impressive. Telekinesis powers Vigo in the novel is described as the first monarch to have magical aptitude. This power came from his mother's lineage. He can shove people back with his magic, lift them or objects, and create a powerful invisible force that keeps people away from getting close to him. These powers also seem to get more powerful the stronger his emotions are. Rose in death animation. When Base Diego or King Diego die, a rose flower lands next to his sword. It's one time his connection to roses from early concepts appears. It seems to be only connected to canon versions of Diego, since alternative universe skins don't have anything like that. I guess that symbolizes Isolde and her love which indicates just a tiny bit that she may not exist in other skin universes. Underwear Chroma Dissonance of Pentakill Viego most likely doesn't have underwear on his base look, at least if we consider the cuts on his pants, but on his sandstone chroma you can actually see that he wears it for once. Nice! Pentakill 3 ARG As we already know, Pentakill 3 had some extra lore around its release. What is very interesting, a special ARG was made too, containing videos, images and more. For example, we got a cipher published, and using it people were able to translate some of the words in previous videos with Diego's narration. We got a video showcasing many numbers, and if you tried to call it, a demonic voice of Mutaris would answer. In the final riddle, Nega says to go insert his metal god's name where it all started. So if you typed mutaris.riotgames.com, you would reach a site where, after clicking the known Noisome host symbols, a video plays, and Diego congratulates you and thanks you for your help, saying that you were the key. You get sacrificed as he opens the gate. You can find some of these with hashtag Vigos Riddles. Visual Novel Sprite Concepts Artist Timmy Choi made rest of the Sentinels visual novel assets for Diego, both of his forms. They also published concept versions of earlier poses on their Twitter, 
but this piece of media got deleted. Luckily, I have them saved, so you can take a look now. I love the first one. Brazil Server Exclusive Ruination Event Artworks During Ruination Events in League of Legends, Brazil Server made audiobooks of stories related to these events. Each of these had a special animated illustration made. Bigger artworks were created as background for his biography, she, and the Prince Clement stories. All of these are available on League of Legends Brazil YouTube channel. And I'm happy to tell everyone that we just got another level covered. So, two more left. Level 8. Star Guardian Echo is a fan of Dissonance Diego. Star Guardian visual novel had quite a lot of locations. Some of these even contain Diego's illustration, usually related to Ruined King game promotional art. Diego's poster also appears in Echo's room or garage but it's specifically Dissonance of Pentakill Diego. When this was pointed out, the artist who, who worked on this piece said that it was fun to imagine what kind of music Echo listens to. Shadow Isles Subway Car For League of Legends 10th anniversary in China, a special subway station display was created. It also included some of subway cars being themed after Runeterra regions, and one of them was Shadow Isles, of course. It even had Diego on the ground, except there's something different about him. And with that image, we can move on to the next level, which is... Diego with no brim. For some reason, Diego, without his ruined crown, is a reoccurring image in some of the Chinese media. If I uh, remember correctly, he also made an appearance in Sentinels of Light event page, not only in China, but also Poland, for example, though it was specifically a support page. It seems to not be related to event ending, because he still has his chest hold present. It's most likely just some assets mistake. But yeah, he exists and looks a little bit silly without his crown. China Exclusive Ruination Artworks While most of translated editions of Ruination novels have the same art as original English version included inside, China got some extra ones. For example, we have Led Roses A Life Look Revealed for the First Time Ever. Illustrations showing Diego include Kalista's flashback on childhood where they were playing together, Diego choosing Ledros as his bodyguard, and him fighting to get to the waters of life. His illustration present in other version also got colored, though it was shown like that online. This one isn't cut though. Other exclusives to this publication artwork illustrate such scenes as Kalista fighting razor scales on the ship, Trash with captured rice, and Kalista with dying ledros. On top of that, sketches of some artifact were included too. For example, Mikael's chalice, Sentinel emblem, Sanctity, Wayfinder, and Absolver. We still didn't get this release in HD, so we only have photos from people who bought the book already. No wedding ring on statue. While the cheaper version of Diego's statue, that unlocked one, has a wedding ring, Infinity Studio one does not, which is curious just because he is very expensive and detailed. Photos shown are still more of a concept though, so there is a chance that he gets his ring back but we need to wait for that. Twisted Treeline OG Ruined King As we already established in the very, very first entry, 
Land of the Ruined King was added to League of Legends together with Twisted Treeline update. This 3v3 map, which was already themed after Shadow Isles, had a special altar mechanic, where you would capture them and gain extra stats for succeeding. Two altars existed there, West and East one, each having special voice lines when being captured. West one, a woman, talking about how this place was once beautiful, how the suffering never ends, how she is here because she must, begging for this to end. Curiously, she also had lines wondering if he remembers her, and overall how she still remembers some fragments of the past. The East Altar, a man talking basically how they will end the living, and how Shadow Isles is powerful, though he also had a line saying that sometimes he can almost remember her face. They also had some special voice lines for Shadow Isles champions, which included pre-rework Evelyn and Mordekaiser, but most importantly, they had lines towards Hecari. The woman tells how to remember who he once was, while the man tells him to lead the charge. What I'm getting at with these informations is that these two altars on Twisted Three Lines were most likely intended to be the first iteration of Ruined King and his Queen, forced to be alive again. In the Twisted Treeline Q&A done in 2012, the reply comes saying that altars were an experimental way of adding more lore into the game. Original poster adds, The man and woman were husbands and wife. They died thousands of years ago and their spirits are forever bound to the place of their death. Over time they have forgotten much of what they w knew of their life. The husband almost completely forgotten his life, and his wife, to the point where he has become a zealot of the Shadow Isles. He literally doesn't remember he was ever alive, except in the rare moments of lucidity. He is proud and eager to serve those who represent the interests of the Shadow Isles. His wife still remembers fragments of her life and her humanity. She is tormented by her undead state and longs to be free. She misses her husband, wants to be with him, and also wants him to be set free. Though she is a tragic character, she is also a vengeful one. She judges the champions of the Shadow Isles for their actions, both in death and in their former lives. Sentinels of Light Mousepad Sometimes, when big league releases happen, rioters who worked on these are gifted special related to it goodies, like pins, battles, and overall some exclusive merch. For Rise of the Sentinels release, some were gifted a huge XL mousepad with promotional graphic. I believe it was the one with action revealed for the first time. I've only seen it once on a photo though. <laughs> Legends of Runeterra shared sensor. Legends of Runeterra sometimes censor things such as skulls, dead bodies or nudity, though Vigo cards dodged most of these. But Sentinels of Light promotional event artwork did not spare him. Outside of his classic shirtless version, he also got one where he has a white shirt with golden details and triangle boot window on. I can't find information which region specifically censored him, like it could be China or it could be Korea or actually someone else as well. But it's not that important, because official English League of Legends account used this banner in their post as well. So his reach was bigger than just one region anyway. To this day I wish Riot released this shirt for actual sale. I would buy one. <laughs> Kevin! So, funny story guys. As we know, Vigo was shown in the Ruined King game trailer by the end of October, on Halloween specifically. And the thing is, we didn't know his name, you know? So what do you do in this situation? 
Do you call him the ruined king every time? Do you just shorten it to TRK? No! Naturally, you give him a nail. You see, a certain Twitter user, which is actually me, hi, uh, was wondering if his name will be like Alfred or Fyodor or some old English mighty name. And then I said that I would name him Kevin. And this is how it all started. You see, he just had Kevin vibes. He just looked like Kevin. And because it was easier to say, just one day after his first trailer appearance, he was given this name by the community. And it was his only one for around two months. But the thing is, it just sticked a bit. Riot Forge got in for the joke as well, calling him Kevin too or adding his name to some of their social media naming games, and on his first birthday they said, Happy birthday, Kevin! This also spread to Teamfight Tactics profile, where they referred to Ruined Pingu as Kevin. On top of that, Kevin Viego has a cameo on at least one commissioned social media artwork. Vigo's writer, when asked what are his thoughts on this, said that it's impressive how we chose the most stupid sounding name for him. But if you want to, to call him that, we can. So, Kevin everyone, that's the Kevin lore. Polish Penta Kevin. You see, we already know about Kevin, but what about Penta Kevin? So, first of all, his name just merges with Pentakill Band's name, and because of Blade of the Ruined King song, everyone was waiting for him to be included in this universe. And he was! But his color scheme was different than Pentakill Free Skins, since he was the dissonance of them, and his hair and outfit, they were just made out of Polish flag. So, that's the whole thing. He got claimed by the Polish community, which has additional greatness in my opinion, since Mordekaiser is claimed by Brazilian community. And both countries just have some similar weird vibes. I don't know, I think he would say Kurva proudly. I love Polish Penta Kevin. Viego Pen. In the recent years, League of Legends started to collaborate with more independent merch and collectibles manufacturers. At the end of 2021, they announced a collection of 10 collectible figures, first revealing Lux design. If you're wondering what even is a pen statue, it's like a normal statue of a character, except you can remove them from the base and usually on their leg, an end of a pen is inserted, so you can write with these. Lux promotional images also had a shadow version of three more figures, Jinx, released in 2022, Seraphim, and Viego, who seems to be holding his sword in one hand and music box in the other. Seraphim and Viego were not yet released, they weren't even fully revealed. Hopefully it's not one release per year. Lux also costs around $60. Chaos Chroma. That's a short entry. One of dissonance of pentakill chromas specifically Sandstone, which apparently is also the one with underwear, looks like Chaos from Guilty Gear, at least when he is in his rape form. I mean, maybe that's a big reach, I don't know, I just wanted to mention it here. Close on gloves. Viego in his original ruined design has gloves that end with cloth. It makes sense, he's an edgy boy. He wears something similar in Dissonance of Pentakill 2. What's interesting is that he also wore this in his king design, even though he's made to be a sweet fairy tale prince there. Due to that fact, they look much more tame. He basically has metal golden nails glued onto his gloves there. It's nice, it fits him. Ruination Bookmarks To promote the Ruination novel during San Diego Comic Con 2022, Hajat and Orbit Books so these novel publishers had a stand there, where they would give out a special ruination bookmarks. There were three of them, Kalista, Trash and Diego. If you moved them around, 
they would shift between their human and wraith forms. On the other side, there was a QR code leading to sneak peek of the novel. They were later released as Chinese Ruination version additional merch. But people who don't buy Chinese books and people who were not at San Diego Comic Con could have a hard time getting this. Legends of Runeterra Gwen's follower Gwen got added to Legends of Runeterra in the middle of 2022. Her main story of defeating Diego sort of ended, so she needed a new set of followers and such. She got a cast of characters known as Midnight Rebels, and they are seemingly hallowed version of some Shadow Isles raves. A card known as Ghostly Paramore exists in this set. He invited Gwen to a dance, and they spent the revel together. It's speculated that it's how Isolde imagined her dream prince to be, because Gwen was made to project Isolde's dream love story onto a dream. Some speculate that it's a different version of Diego. Some assume it may be how his older brother looks like. What gives this theory an additional ground is that Ghostly Paramour actually has a Where Is She line, which is pretty iconic for Diego. And finally, last year is coming. Level 9 Diego Gurt Chinese yogurt drink brand Mama Chilvatsi has an ongoing partnership with Riot Games China. Because of that, they have a line of their yogurts with League of Legends champions on the bottles. They also made Gwen and Seraphine ice cream, apparently. So, all I'm saying is that official Diego yogurt products exist. And... would you drink it? Lego Diego. During Sentinels of Light event, like a lot of things mentioned on this list already, League of Legends Korea collaborated with Korea's top LEGO collectors and builders and released a special Rise of the Sentinels LEGO set. It had every League Sentinel skin included, plus Action, Senna, Lucian, Gwen, Unbound Trash and Viego. On their Facebook page, they did a giveaway where you could win Vayne, Senna, Lucian or Viego. Please, look at Lego Viego. He even rhymes. I love how he has no jacket sides. I wish he wasn't that limited. Dissonance Viego would drown. Short entry. Riot Games Music released a promotional art with music verse champions by the pool. Viego isn't present there, and to that question, and he is maybe drowning outside of frame, they answered that it would be pretty hard to swim in all that leather. Anya's Ruined King scenes and dialogues. Ruined King game release got delayed, but it still had a solid story. While searching the files, I found some unused pieces of dialogue and some cutscenes I did not remember. I asked other people and yeah, they just didn't make it into the game. I have them uploaded as a separate video if you want to see, though they don't have music. Basically, in the game it is mentioned how a piece of easels is in Bilgewater, though we never see this scene in the game. One of scenes show Viego finding her crown, you know, crown of the Shadow Queen, the item we later got in League of Legends. If the game released before League's event with Visual Novel, it would also be the first instance of Isol's Fetter thing. Basically, Vigo says that she is shattered and wants to put her back together. This one unused scene was giving a lot of context for the rest of the story, in my opinion. Other unused scenes have Vigo merging with the mist, so he doesn't have legs and he just floats around at a very fast speed and a dialogue between Viego and Trash, possibly after he got defeated in the game. There, it looks like Viego punishes Trash. It probably didn't make it into the game, because Trash played a really big role in the later events too, where he still needed to manipulate Viego. These scenes didn't make it into the game, either because the story already concluded, or because there would be too many cinematics playing back to back. Still though, 
I think we missed on some additional really cool content. Star Guardian Viego Gwen in Legends of Runeterra got an exclusive Star Guardian skin. Artist who worked on her released her concept art too. On one of the sheets you can see her star design ideas, and one of them has a description that says Mimics Viegos, so there was a chance that he was considered to be a star guardian as well. Perhaps he becomes one in the future. Vigotist in the Spirit Blossom 2020 Vigo was developed for a really long time. He was already locked as a thing together with a whole event when Spirit Blossom 2020 visual novel was being developed. Jared Rosen worked on both of these things. In the Spirit Blossom Aries route, she says, Isn't this exciting? A spirit realm, the mortal world, an obsessed king. I bet that things like this don't happen often where you're from. Here she was referencing Spirit Blossom Trash, but just a year later we literally got an obsessed king trying to bring someone back to mortal world. It's a great easter egg. The writer even confirmed it to be intentional. Viego Dub Pentakill Free Concert was made with motion capture. Most of the people playing Pentakill cast were not their respective voices, except for Viego, as Stella actually was playing him. On his social media he released a short video, behind the scenes kind of thing, where he tests Viego's model by dancing and dubbing around. AFK Arena copying his spell AFK Arena is a mobile game developed by Lilith Games. Sometimes they get accused of copying other games and media overall, though their game art style is pretty neat if I'm honest. One time they copied the look of Vigo's Legends of Runeterra card spell known as Despair. It's Vigo's iconic pose with his sword, wraiths and black mists around. They used this design for a spell called Last Stand. Though, after people pointed it out, the posts with this were deleted, and spell look was changed. At this point, I cannot pinpoint for which character this spell was made, but yeah, it happened, I was there. No underwear. And final, last entry, though maybe it's a bit anticlimactic. And maybe, just maybe it shouldn't be that low, because I feel like most people know that deep in their hearts. Vigo most likely doesn't wear underwear. That's what a rioter said when asked about it. That's what his dissonance of pentacle skin hints with pant comes. He wears his pants so incredibly low on ruined look, it's hard to imagine extra layer of clothing under it. And furthermore, Considering some historical context, you can also assume that he just prefers to feel more freedom down there. That's it. That's all. And phew! Around 145 Diego Iceberg facts and details and tiny things. And we should be done. There is totally nothing more left. Unless... Level 10. Papuvim. Okay, so this is a joke entry. You can just skip it further or whatever, you know. But I figured that since it's my iceberg and my video, I deserve to put it here as a treat. I like Viego. I really like Viego. He's my favorite beloved little guy, and I kind of named him Kevin, and this one is Viego is Polish, and I'm Polish. So I just think that he deserves some kisses from me. I just... I like him, guys. I like him so much. And now I can show you some Tapuvin art. And some of it isn't even commissioned by me, like people just made it for me and I'm just so happy. So I'm just, I'm showing it too for you. <laughs> and I just love Penta Kevin, he's my guy, he's my man. 
<laughs> and my dream is to be included in the background for something with this Lance Diego, like just put me in the crown for his Legends of Runeterra skin or something. I would be so happy. Anyways, good night everyone. Actually, no good night. Let me just close this video correctly. So I wanted to release it sooner, but I got sick and writing a script took me a week and I couldn't recover fast enough and I'm actually still sick while writing it and then like my exam session happened and whatever but the important thing is that I actually finished this so I'm really impressed, I'm, I'm proud of myself and if Vega gets anything worthy enough of an iceberg content you know I would like to record an extra short video with him too, like with an update. Uh, who knows? Icebergs are fun. Um, well, I would also like to give some shoutouts to people I like, which is mainly just my Twitter mutuals. Uh, I don't know if I can name people actually, if they are okay with that. So let me just say that thank you gamers and I love you and also shout out to all the people who worked on Viego, you know, and also shout out to my fellow Viego enjoyers because I like <laughs> I love you guys. I love you guys and like thank you for helping me to remember some facts for the iceberg too. So there is that. So yeah, thank you so much for watching, I hope I didn't do many English mistakes, I hope my voice was okay and the editing was fine too. Thank you so so much, I love Diego, my name is Papu Hoho and bye bye! Uh, hello everyone, so I have some bad news actually. Uh, because I was finishing the video with everything and I don't know how did this happen, you know but I realized that I forgot one fact <laughs> which is... <laughs> I mean, I'm pretty sure I forgot more of them but I wanted to... I wanted to include that one um, so I'll just... Um, yeah, it, it was like supposed to be in, in level 3, I think. So let's just sneakily add it here. It's it's nice draw emote. And uh, let me just tell you very fast what, what is this about. So, nice draw emote references Jankos or Jankos. I don't know which way he prefers to be uh, like pronounced. Uh, but it refers him to link like drawing teams uh, to play against each other uh, and he pulled it and it was like upside down and he made a funny face so um, that's the that's the emote reference here and I'm, I'm ashamed of myself <laughs> oh my god I, I finished the whole thing uh, anyway uh, yes that that yes mm. Hopefully I don't remember any more stuff because it's it's 2 a.m. Uh, such is life, everyone. Such is life. Uh, thank you again. Uh, yeah. See you next year. <laughs> bye bye.